All right, guys, in this module, we're going to break down using contracts. And we're going to talk about, you know, what contracts we use and how we use them. And really, at the end of the day, the wholesaling business is really just a business of marketing to find motivated sellers, people that are motivated, they need convenience from you as the investor, the buyer, um, in exchange for a discount, right? So the great thing about this business is we're able to use contracts and paperwork to go and secure properties and give us what's referred to as equitable interest in that deal. We don't typically buy a property when we're wholesaling it. We just use a contract to gain control of that property. Then we market the contract to purchase it to our list of cash buyers, our local investors. They could be rehabbers. They could be landlords. They could be just investors that are looking for deals on properties. In fact, I have wholesale properties to handyman or handyman type folks that will buy a property and they'll fix it up with their own resources. And then they'll move into it or rent it out or flip it or whatever it may be. But again, the main lesson here is, is that we don't need to buy properties in order to sell them. That's the great thing about wholesaling. We can use contracts to gain control of them and have an interest in them. That interest is actually referred to as equitable interest. And when we have that equitable interest, we can then turn around and market that property. But really, the best way to word this is market that contract to purchase that property. In fact, we're not really marketing that property. We are marketing our contract to purchase that property. Now, in later modules, we're going to talk about what we would do to market that contract or market the property. And we'll get into that. Essentially, we just need to make sure that we are highlighting the fact that we are marketing our contract. And we can do so with just a very, very simple you know, sentence or a few words. And again, we're going to get to that in the next module on marketing properties. But in this module, we're going to talk about the actual contract and the paperwork that we use to go get a property under contract to gain control so that way we have some inventory like we talked about in the last video or two. We got to have inventory if we're going to make money in this business, which means we have to have something to sell. In order to have something to sell, we have to have something under contract, something that we have control of. We have to have that equitable interest, which is what we gain by using contracts. So the contract that I'm going to share with you all in this free course is super, super simple. In fact, it's a one page contract and you can download it uh, not only in this module, but also down below in the resources. Um, there's going to be an area to download it there as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this contract on the screen and I'm going to see if I can't zoom in a little bit and I will slide to the side. And if you can't see this, you know, maybe make the video full screen. Otherwise, download the contract and then um, it'll be much easier for you to actually read if you have it printed out on your desk, you know, while you're watching this video. But the great thing about this contract is it's very, very simple and it's very, very straightforward. And as you can see here, it is one page. And that's all it requires. You don't need a crazy long four, six, eight. I've even seen 10 and 12 and 14 page contracts. And the great, and the great thing about it is, is you don't need a long lengthy, lengthy, you know, 10 or 12 page contract to gain control of a property or to get a property under contract. In fact, this one that we offer and give away here in this free course, we've probably purchased four or 500 properties with this contract. Most of those for wholesaling, but some of those properties we've actually closed on and purchased and either relisted on the MLS and wholetailed it, or we've fixed it up and flipped it for a profit, or maybe we've fixed it up and rented it out as, you know, as a landlord and as a rental property. And there's even more advanced steps that you can use like the Burr method, but regardless, not going to get into the weeds. This is the contract that we've used in the past and it is very, very simple and very, very straightforward. So this contract is going to start off by stating standard contract to purchase real estate. Keep it simple. Don't overthink it. And all we're really going to do is we're going to fill in the blanks and we're going to get the contract signed by the owner of the property the property owner, the seller. In order to get a property under contract, we have to 
fill out a contract, get a signature, and then we're going to take it to a title or escrow company, or maybe your state requires closing attorneys. And I can drop down below the list of those states. There's only, I think, 10 or 11 of them. But regardless, we're going to need both the contract deposited into a third-party escrow. Uh, again, could be a title company, could be an escrow, and earnest money. But here's the crazy part and the cool part. Don't freak out. You don't need tens of thousands of dollars in earnest money. In fact, the average deal I buy is either $10 or $100 of earnest money. I often shoot for $10. If the seller doesn't like that number, I'll offer $100. But it is very rare. I'm talking, you know, 90% of the time. And I've done about 1,000 transactions in my day. I'm using $100 or less in earnest money. So let's jump into this contract and we're going to read through this. I'm going to see if I can't make it just a little bit bigger. I'll slide on over here and we're going to go. All right, here it is. So this contract dated and you're just going to put your date. What's today's date in, the, in that first blank right there in which the buyer now, if you have an entity or an LLC, put your LLC there. My business is, is household easy. So I'm going to put household easy right there. But if you have your own home buyer's property group or whatever it is, put it there. If you don't have an LLC, don't freak out. You can just put your name right there. So me, I'm David Dodge. I could just put David Dodge as the buyer in that first blank. Next, offers to purchase from seller. Next is the seller's name. Again, don't overthink this. Keep it simple. There's no reason to complicate this. The following described real estate together with all improvements thereon and all appurtenant rights located at the address. So what is the property address that you are essentially going to be wanting to purchase? That goes on that third line right there. Next, in consideration of the sum of as earnest money due upon completion of the inspection period, seller agrees. So right here on this next line is going to be your earnest money. Again, I often use $10. Occasionally, I'll use $100. It is very, very rare that I am putting up more than $100 unless A, I know it is a home run deal or B, I personally intend to close on the deal. If I'm wholesaling a deal, $100 is typically the most that I'm going to be willing to put up, and it's the most you should put up. You don't need to get crazy because your earnest money you know, may or may not be refundable. Also notice that I put that the earnest money is due upon completion of our inspection period. Very, very, very important because basically what that means is, is that you know, I don't need to go deposit my earnest money to my local title company or escrow company or maybe a closing attorney unless I have completed my inspection period and the inspection comes back positive and acceptable, okay? Next, the purchase price is to be payable in cash at closing. Well, that part right there is gonna be the purchase price. So maybe I'm gonna be willing to purchase a property at 100,000, but that property is really worth about 140 or 150,000. Again, you gotta get great deals in order to be able to wholesale them. So we're going to put the actual purchase price amount right there on number one. Number two, the conditions of this purchase are as follows. And notice there's going to be some CYA clauses kind of buried in this contract. It's simple. It's only one page. And we're going to read through those now. So number two, the condition of the purchase are as follows. A, property is going to be sold in as is condition with no warranties made by the seller the seller will make the buyer aware of any known facts that affect the value of the property, okay? So essentially, we are not asking the seller to warranty the property, but we are asking them to fill us in and let us know if there's any issues or anything known about the property that we can be made aware of because it's going to help us do our due diligence and determine if this property is going to be one that we want to move forward on, if we're going to find a buyer for it, so on and so forth. All right, next is B. And B is the seller and tenant, if any, because sometimes properties are going to be occupied when we get them under contract, okay? So the seller and tenant, if, if any, will make the property accessible to show partners, lenders, inspectors, appraisers, and contractors prior to the closing. In order to wholesale a property, we need to get in. We need to do some inspections. Our buyers are going to want to get in. 
if they're using financing, their bankers or appraisers or their inspectors are want to get in. So we need to have access to the property prior to closing on it. All right. So that's what B states. Uh, C, if the buyer is unable to complete the purchase for any reason, the earnest money deposit shall be forfeited to the seller as total liquidated or liquidated damages and the buyer is released from any further obligation under this contract. And the reason that this is so important is because in the event that, you know, we can't close on the property or our buyer stands us up if we're wholesaling it, which is what this course is all about, you know, the earnest money that we deposit, hopefully it's going to be $10 or $100, we're going to forfeit that. And that is going to essentially cover us of any damages and prevent the seller from coming back and trying to, you know, sue us or or make us perform on the property. I've never been sued. I've never had a seller, you know, come back and um, essentially try to force me to perform because I have good communication, right? But in the event that something happens, you're going to forfeit that earnest money. Another good reason why we're not going to be putting up thousands and thousands of dollars in earnest money. In fact, I would say the majority of the time, so 51 plus, plus percent of the time, the earnest money that I post up is $10. The contract doesn't need to have a lot of earnest money, but it often needs to have some earnest money because for a contract to be legal and valid, it has to have what's referred to as due consideration, and that is the earnest money. Okay, moving on. D, if the seller cannot provide clear title or doesn't allow proper inspection of the property, buyer will be released from any further obligation under the contract. Otherwise, seller promises to sell under this contract. So what this part basically says is if the seller can't provide clear title, you know, or doesn't allow the inspections of the property, we're going to walk. We're not going to close. And in the event that the buyer, you know, will be released from any of these obligations under this contract from those issues. Otherwise, the seller is promising to pay. So essentially they are saying, yep, we want to sell. And as long as we can provide clear title and give you the proper inspection period that you are requesting, we promise to sell to you. And again, that's more on the seller side. Next, letter E, closing to be held in the county where the property is located, buyer shall select the closing agent. And there is a line there. So if you already have a relationship with a local title company, a local escrow company, or maybe you live in one of the 11 states that requires an attorney and you already have an attorney that you're working with, you can write that in right there. If you don't already have an attorney, or a title company. I personally don't use attorneys. I'm in a state that doesn't require them. I just use title companies. If you don't already have one, well then go meet one, find one. They're on every corner. Make a relationship with one. And you can in fact even leave that blank and fill it in later if you don't know. All right, next F, purchase contract is assignable. Well, yes, of course it's gonna be assignable. And in fact, most contracts are assignable unless they explicitly say that they're not assignable, but we just went ahead and threw it into this one, just making it very clear that in the event that we find a buyer, a cash buyer to wholesale it to, that we can very easily assign this contract to them. So number uh, F here is the purchase contract is assignable. All right, G, we are flying through this. G, we're almost done. The agreement is subject to the final inspection and approval of the property by the buyer. What that means is, is that I have the ability to go walk through the property one last time and do a final inspection and approve the property by the buyer, that's me, right, prior to closing. And there's a blank, blank business days after the date this contract is received by. So this essentially is the amount of time that I want to give myself, my team, my cash buyers to inspect the property. You may write 5, 10, 15, 20 days in there. Now, notice we have business days in there. And business days is very, very important because business days, a business day is your Monday through Friday days, okay? And if you have, you know, five business days versus five days, five business days could be seven days, whereas five days is just five days. 10 days is 10 days, obviously. But guys, check this out. 10 business days is 14 days. So by adding the one word business into this contract, which is already in there for you, you are going to buy yourself 40% more time to go about doing your inspections on the property. 
I love it. All right, keep it rocking. Number three, taxes to be prorated and any previous year's taxes to be paid by the seller. That is very, very standard and very, very um, normal. In fact, I don't pay people's taxes. They need to cover those at closing in the event that they owe taxes for the current year or maybe even previous years. All attorney closing fees and customary closing costs shall be paid by the buyer. Now, in this contract, we are offering to pay the seller's closing costs. If you don't want to do that, you can change that. But me as a wholesale buyer, instead of negotiating up a thousand or two thousand or five thousand or ten thousand dollars to try to meet somebody at a price that makes sense, instead I just say, hey, how about um, we go with the number that I'm offering, but I pay all of your closing costs. Now keep in mind, these costs aren't referring to debts and bills that they have in order to close on the property. This just refers to the customary closing costs that they would incur with the title company or closing attorney. And check this out, it's typically somewhere between three and $500. So instead of offering another three or five or $10,000, I offer what I'm offering and I say, I'm gonna pay your closing costs and it helps me get a better deal on the property. Okay, moving along. Number four, closing date shall be on or before days from the date signed below by the seller. Seller grants an extension needed to clear title or to complete the closing documentation in the event it's needed. Title to the above described real estate to be conveyed by warranty deed or other customary instrument of transfer. Title is to be free, clear, and unencumbered, free of any county, city, and federal liens, and all liens against the property shall be paid at closing by the seller. So number four, I'm gonna put the number of days in which I wanna close, or I can even just write a date in there. Oftentimes I'll just say, hey, you know, today's December 28th, we're gonna close this around the 15th of January, and I can actually just write a date in there, or I can put the number of days, you know, from the time that the seller signs it to the time that we're gonna close on it. Don't overthink this, this is not rocket science. All right, number five, the offer when accepted compromises the, or comprises, I'm sorry, comp comprises the entire agreement of purchase and seller and it is agreed that no other representations have been made. It's just basically saying this is it. It's simple, it's one page. Everything that we are talking about and agreeing to is on this piece of paper right here. All right, next, number six, contract contingent on verifying taxes, title, and value upon my satisfaction my satisfactory inspection of the property. And this is one of the CYA clauses right here, right? This contract is contingent on verifying taxes. Well, that's pretty easy. I can look that up by verifying the title. Well, the title company is going to go about doing that. But the value, this is one of the key words here that gives me a huge out in this contract. By verifying the value, the value is like, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? Well, same thing with value. If I don't verify the value or see the value in the property at any given time, between the time that I sign this contract and the time I go to close, this is my CYA, my main CYA that will allow me to exit this contract. Now, I may have to forfeit earnest money if I have already deposited it, but oftentimes, I can know before my inspection period's over if I'm gonna be able to find a buyer or if I'm gonna be able to close on this myself. So I love number six, that's our CYA. And then number seven is additional terms and conditions. And you can write anything in here. Last but not least, seller can sign, print, and date. Buyer can sign, print, and date. And that's really it. It is a very, very simple, basic contract. And you can download that contract in this module um, below this video or scroll down to the resources and growth tools and there's actually a little section that we're going to have this contract and a couple other really really awesome tools for you all now in the additional terms and conditions think about this for a second there may be times where a seller says hey you know i want to take the refrigerator or the stove or the range or the washer and dryer well then write that in it just says seller plans to take these items these items are going to be excluded from the sale Additionally, you could add in more CYA clauses. And I'll actually make a list of some of my favorite ones down below this video for you to copy and take and use as if they were own. Some of them that come to mind would be, you know, acceptable sewer scope inspection. Or maybe I need to get a, you know, a professional electrician or plumber or foundation guy 
to come out and look at a particular property. One of my favorite CYA clauses is based on my partner's approval. Now, notice I didn't say Mike, my partner Mike, or, or Jay, my partner Jay, or you know Kristen, my partner Kristen. I just said based on my partner's approval, or this contract is contingent upon my partner's approval. And if I don't have a partner yet, my partner can be my cash buyer, whoever I'm going to be wholesaling this deal to. So sometimes being vague in a contract can be very, very, very advantageous to you when it comes to wholesaling. So again, keep it simple. Contracts are what give you the ability to get equitable interest and gain control in a piece of real estate. Without control, you are not allowed to market that contract to purchase. And in fact, you're not going to have any inventory. No inventory means I have nothing to sell, which means I can't make any money. I have to have properties under contract in order to wholesale them in order to get paid. So understand that contracts are very, very, very important in this business. In fact, there's really only three things that matter when it comes to wholesaling. Marketing, making offers and using contracts, and number three is following up. We must follow up like crazy with our, you know, our leads, our prospects. And, and, and basically let them know that we can help them. So that's a wrap here on this module on using contracts and the actual paperwork. It is a very simple contract. It's one page. Don't overthink it. I have used this contract to buy hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of properties, mostly for wholesaling purposes. So keep it simple. Don't overthink it and use the contract that we have provided in this free course. It works in every single state, and it is very, very simple. And one last thing, you know, I mentioned earlier about contracts being 7, 10, 12, 14 pages, and that creates analysis paralysis. Oftentimes, people are going to want their attorney to review those. And by using a simple one-page contract where everything is very, very straightforward, it typically is going to prevent a seller from wanting to review it or have a spouse look it over, or a friend, or an attorney, which slows things down and delays the process. So my advice to you is use a simple contract, use the one we provide in this course to prevent them from delaying. And the goal is, is to get the contract signed. So print these out, throw them in the trunk of your car. I know I have about 100 in my trunk at any given time. And Keep them with you because if you're out on an appointment and you make an offer to a seller and they say, yeah, that's actually a good, a good number. I like it. Get it in writing. Get the contract signed. Don't delay. And guys, that's it. It's that simple. So using contracts to gain control of properties is the name of the game. Without contracts, we don't have control. Without control, we don't have inventory. Without inventory, we can't wholesale the deal or any deal. So contracts are very, very, very important. Now, the next module in this course is going to be about marketing the properties and marketing the deals and the contracts to purchase these deals um, and different strategies and different ways that we can use to go about finding cash buyers and unload the inventory that we have that we've gained from using the contract. So check out the next module on marketing your deals. Thanks, guys.